Dab Saxena. I'm a, a chemical engineer. I'm a, a, I'm a MBA and I'm a Lean and Six Sigma Master Black Belt. And uh, for the last uh, 25 years, uh, I've total 30 years of experience in the industry. For the last 25 years, I've been into uh, quality. And uh, around uh, 16 years ago, uh, my wife is a doctor. So she told me that I should devote myself to healthcare quality too. And uh, since then, I've been doing lots of uh, lean, uh, uh, lean Six Sigma uh, training programs for healthcare and hospitals. And last 14 years, or 12 years, I would say, I've been doing CPHQ training programs. So healthcare quality has been my uh, interest for the last uh, 12 years. And uh, over the last, uh, I would say, around 10 years or so, I have uh, uh, trained uh, more than 3,000 people. And my team totally has trained more than 4,000 people uh, in, in CPHQ and 90% uh, of them have been certified as uh, CPHQ professionals. The remaining they maybe chose not to appear for the exam, I would say. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, 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 our success rate has been quite high and we motivate you to appear for the exam. So the idea is that you should uh, all get motivated and uh, just uh, before I, uh, uh, before I proceed, let me take you through the agenda. So I'll be talking about the benefits, what is CPHQ, uh, what you can expect from being a CPHQ, uh, what are the modules? I'll be uh, introducing you to the four modules, what you need to learn when you are, when you say you are a CPHQ. When you are, uh, um, when you uh, are appearing for a CPHQ exam, before, of course, you become a CPHQ professional, you have to write an exam. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, tell you about uh, the, what is there in the exam. So the modules, which you need to study for appearing for the exam. Then one of the most uh, difficult modules in a CPHQ exam is uh, data analytics and the process improvement module. So out of the four modules, one is leadership, one is uh, data analytics, one is process improvement, and one is uh, patient safety. So mostly people don't uh, fail in the uh, leadership and the patient safety modules, but uh, generally the failure occurs in uh, data analytics and also the uh, process improvement module, so performance improvement module. So I will focus a little bit more on it in this uh, training. And uh, I will also talk about, if time permits, FME, failure modes and effects analysis. And uh, then I will show you some project examples as we uh, learn some of the tools and techniques. So if time permits, uh, I will show you two projects, but at least one project definitely. I will show it to you. Uh, process improvement project, what a CPHQ uh, professional would do. And uh, what uh, this will also give you an idea what uh, uh, a CPHQ professional is capable of uh, you know, doing after uh, he or she gets certified as a CPHQ. Then uh, if uh, I think I'll keep around 10 to 15 minutes, I'll still stay on after the uh, two hours, I'll still stay on and I'll try to answer some of your questions. And uh, with that, I'm sure uh, you should get enough confidence to write your CPHQ exam. And if you're not trained uh, in CPHQ, of course, you can, uh, we'll give you an offer, very good offer, that if you want, you can join our sessions too. So about the organization, we have been into uh, quality, Lean Six Sigma, uh, CPHQ, uh, project management, et cetera, lots of other different types of uh, uh, trainings, all related to quality for the last uh, 16 years, personally, I already introduced, I'm having 30 years of experience and uh, I've been doing trainings and consulting in quality all over the world over the last 30 years. Some of the, some of the uh, pictures or photographs to prove that I've been doing this uh, from all corners of the world. Now, this is my, as I told you, see, the CPHQ is about quality. 
and one of the highest certification in quality is one of the highest certification in quality is lean six sigma so i always take pride in telling that this batch in 2008 was the first ever batch in whole of middle east which got certified as lean six sigma black belt and i am proud to tell you that i conducted this training program so i was the person who i would say i i always take pride in telling that uh, i brought uh, lean six sigma to middle east um, have, uh, although i started my journey in europe and then of course we have done training programs worldwide as you can see right from uh, us uh, to philippines uh, uk national healthcare service is our client uh, this is a chinese hospital they underwent uh, cphq they underwent uh, all green belt and black belt trainings as well uh, this is uh, a pharmaceutical company novartis uh, then uh, this is uh, one of the uh, i think soft drink giants i, I wouldn't name them but It's based in US. Uh, we have won a lot of awards for uh, our work from various forums. Ministry of Health of four countries are our clients, and health ministers of four countries have attended our uh, training programs. Uh, if if time permits, I will show you some credentials of some of the health ministers talking about our training program. Ministry of Health in UAE, Ministry of Health in Saudi Arabia, Ministry of Health in Vietnam, and National Healthcare Service in US. Uh, this well, is Alex Vidal. Well, we have Alex Vidal. So National Healthcare Service, sorry, National Healthcare Service in UK, they have done lots of improvement projects with us, and uh, we have trained a lot of people. in healthcare quality liverpool university hospital we have done uh, plus uh, actually there are a lot of credentials uh, if time permits i'll show it to you maybe towards the end uh, but so here also I, if if time permits i will i will i'll play all these videos a little later appeared in uh, a lot of uh, business radio uh, tv channels a uh, business programs had some lot of fun uh, spoken in uh, american society of quality uh, world conferences and uh, so i was just talking about my credentials uh, as people are still joining in so um i have written a book as well uh, on our journey uh, company's journey and of course uh, uh, deputy uh, minister, uh, health minister uh, dr darif alama late maybe i will try to show you all these uh, credentials towards the end i will just giving you a glimpses and uh, this is sultan qaboos university hospital in oman and uh, so so we have done a lot of quality related trainings in healthcare and a uh, lot of cphq related trainings in uh, uh, different hospitals especially in saudi arabia uae oman and other middle east countries okay. now uh let me first uh, you know take you through one of the often asked questions what exactly is it what what would happen i am a cpc so let me briefly touch upon that what what is the difference cpc means so certified professional in healthcare quality is an exam conducted by nahq national association for healthcare quality is a membership and certification organization comprising of more than 14000 now it is actually 16000 healthcare quality professional working in healthcare settings nahq is the only organization to certify professionals in the field of healthcare quality with the cpc 
So it has got uh, four modules, uh, the leadership, as I talked about, then we have data analytics and performance improvement and the patient safety, the four modules. And briefly, I will give full description of those four modules. In fact, I'll give you all the topics. I'll give a brief idea of all the topics, very you know, brief list of uh, those topics. And out of that two or three, I will expand in detail during this training program. Uh, as the healthcare continues to evolve, uh, you need to prove your credentials. And more than ever, the quality in healthcare has become more and more important. So obviously, healthcare studying quality for healthcare is something very, very useful, not only for individually for you, but also in general for the mankind. So all of the healthcare professions should be aware of quality. And this is one of the prime reasons that CPHQ has been a very, very prestigious uh, certification in the healthcare service. It has got 140 questions. 120 of these questions are used to compute the score. 15 are pre-test questions. I won't go into the details of this. This, uh, this uh, information can be obtained through generic websites also. So I will uh, rather focus on the, uh, the learning part. So you need to... Uh, answer the 125 score question in addition to 15 pre-test questions and passing percentage is not uh, revealed like passing percentage or the mark scored or percentage which you need to score to pass is not revealed but uh, we make the cases it, it should be around somewhere around 60 to 70 percent and uh, we make sure when I conduct a CPHQ training I make sure that uh, you are at least able to get 85% plus. So 85% plus is what we aim for and definitely you will pass the exam. Okay, so I will uh, uh, just jump into the learning part and uh, let me first uh, take you through the content the outline of the CPH2 uh, exam. So as I was telling you, there, were, there are four modules. The first module is organizational leadership, which has 35 questions. Organizational leadership has got three subtitles, structure and integration, then regulatory accreditation and external recognition, and then education, training, and communication. So let us talk about all three very, very briefly. Structure and integration. So as you can see, it is all about organizational leadership. So the main role of implementing a quality culture in the organization is that of the senior management. So senior management is responsible for ensuring that it is able to establish quality culture within the hospital. For that, we need to have an infrastructure in place. Leadership should show using appropriate policies, procedures, and actions that they support and commit towards the quality. And they need to build a support within the organization and a commitment towards the quality. So how can they do that? By encouraging and participating in organizational-wide strategic planning related to quality, encouraging the quality-related activities, uh, and especially encouraging the quality improvement projects. Aligning the quality and safety activities with the strategic goals. So every, or, every hospital has got a vision, every healthcare organization has got a vision. Uh, what is the difference between mis uh, mission and a vision? Mission is something which is continuous in nature, that doesn't change over the period of time. And vision is something how the hospital sees itself after a period of time. Say, for example, you will have a 2025 vision. You, you will have a 2030 vision. Means how you see yourself at that particular point of time. So you have a vision. Every hospital has got a vision. To achieve that vision, you have, you would create some goals and strategies how you will reach these goals. Quality 
and safety should be part of that strategy. And it should be established as the part of the strategy. That's what this module talks about. Then we have to ensure that we engage the stakeholders to promote quality and safety. We provide consent support to the governing body and clinical staff regarding their roles and responsibility. And here, the role of the CPHQ is important. CPHQ becomes an internal consultant to the hospital, facilitate the development of quality structure, assisting in evaluating and developing data management systems, evaluating and integrating the external best practices and participating in activities to identify and evaluate innovative solutions and practices. So ultimately, the main role of the leadership is to ensure that it is able to create an infrastructure so that hospital is able to change for the better. The problems are not in the people, problems are in the processes. So 85% of the problems are in the processes or systems. Only 15% is contributed by the people. So leadership, who is responsible for establishing the systems and infrastructure takes the lead role here. So this module talks about that. The next module, the next sub-module, regulatory accreditation and external recognition. Talks about uh, getting accreditation, like uh, if you are in, uh, Saudi Arabia, so Sibahi or JCI, et cetera, you know, whatever, whichever, uh, uh, whatever uh, accreditation is applicable to you, to your hospital, you are trying to accredit, accredit, get an accreditation, appropriate accreditation, a quality accreditation for your hospital. So this talks about the clinical practice guidelines and uh, 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 pathways, uh, service quality, documentation, practitioner, performance evaluation, like peer review, credentialing, privileging, um, this was for personal accreditation and, of course, the external recognition as well, like JCI. Then comes the education and training, est establishing appropriate uh, infrastructure to educate all the staff in quality and safety. And that is what is the main responsibility of the senior management. So this module is talking about organization leadership, the first one. The second module is talking about health data analytics. It has got 30 items. It has got 30 items. Now, 30 items related to design and data management, which will involve how to maintain the confidentiality of the uh, improvement records, how to measure. You cannot improve, you cannot measure. So all the tools and techniques to measure the sampling methodologies. I will talk in detail about this today and then assisting in developing the scorecards, dashboards, connecting and validating the data, measurement and analysis, how to use Pareto chart, run chart, scattered arm control, control chart, all of these tools I'll be discussing today. And uh, they, then how to get your descriptive statistics, standard deviation, correlation, all these things as much as possible, I'll be talking about today in detail. Then we will be uh, talking also about uh, some of the advanced tools. We'll also learn which comes in performance and process improvement module, which has 40 items, which contains information about Lean, Six Sigma, PDCA, uh, all these tools also I'll be briefly touching about today. So these are the two modules I'll be talking in detail. So I'm not going to describe these modules right now. Uh, you have one and a half hours to listen to me on those topics. And of course, the finally, the fourth module is about patient safety. Here, you will assess the organization's culture of safety, then participate in risk management assessment activities, uh, use safety principles like human factors in dreaming, uh, high reliability, systems thinking, of deming, and then of course, participate in safety and risk management activities like FMEA, failure modes and effects analysis, and I'll be talking about FMEA as well today. So a lot of things to talk about. Okay, so now let us move on. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Do you agree 
that there are two types of theta. Or before that, let me show you. Let me ask you another question. So what do you see? What are the similarities here? What are the similarities here? Yes, please. So you can answer, you can answer these. Uh, Waiting time for OPD and discharge time is reduced, okay. Some people are telling, okay, it's all about improvement, yes. Yes, 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 you're right. And all of them have used improvement project. Yes, you're right. All of them have used quality tools and techniques to improve the processes. Improve the processes in the hospital. And that is what you are going to learn in the program. And as a CPSP also, that is what you use, the tools and techniques. Okay. Now, please answer this question. Do you agree that there are two types of data? Some can be measured and some cannot be measured. Do you agree with that? Two types of data, some can be measured, some cannot be measured. Okay, so some people are saying yes, uh, some people are saying no. So let me tell you, there are two rules whenever you are dealing with the data. And as I promised you, I'm going to talk about data today, okay? So this is the most difficult topic in CPHQ, the most difficult topic I'm going to touch upon. The remaining topics are very, very easy, okay? So remember, you can't improve if you cannot measure. And the second rule is you can measure everything, the two rules. You can't improve if you cannot measure. And the second rule is you can measure everything. Now you will say, how? So I'll tell you. First of all, let me tell you that when we talk about data, when you ask about data, people have got a lot of different uh, responses. What are the typical responses? Well, we do not collect the data. Our hospital have got a lot of work, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. We, we treat the patients, we don't collect the data. Okay? There's no time to collect the data. Or why should I give you my data? You will take my infection rate data and display it on a graph and chart and tell the whole world what exactly we are doing. No, no, I, I don't want to do the data. Or we have too much of data. It is around everywhere, but we don't know what to do. So today you will know what to do with the data. Okay. Analysis is too complicated. Oh, I find analysis too complicated. And uh, analysis, I, I'm not a statistician. I, I, I don't uh, know, uh, mathematics is a difficult subject. So all these things will be, this, this mindset would be changed today, okay? So let me tell you, there are two types of data. At least what will happen today, I will try to remove the fear of data and I will make you fall in love with the data, and not only data, but also data analytics, both data as well as data analytics. There are two types of data. Let me write it down here. Two types of data are Continuous data, yes, as some of you are already writing. Continuous data and attribute data. Yeah, yeah as it was mentioned there. Yeah. Just give me one minute.
So there are two types of data, continuous and Continuous data is something which we feel can be expressed in numbers like waiting time, waiting time of a patient in an OPD, 20.5 minutes, discharge time of a patient, uh, 4.2 hours. So here you will see that, and you'll find that always continuous data will have a unit and continuous data will have a possibility of a decimal point. This is point 20.5, 4.2. What does it mean? It has a decimal, right? Continuous data can be represented on a number line between minus infinity to plus infinity means any number, 23.698 is possible. Any number is possible. It can be whatever I, whenever I can express anything in decimal with a unit, it is a continuous. Can you give me some examples, please? Yes, age, yeah. 52.5 uh, years, yeah, 52.5 years. Age, oh, this is my age, okay. Uh, weight, now this is not my weight, but I'm just 76.5 kgs. It's continuous data, right? Now, the attribute data, what is attribute data? Attribute data is something which we feel cannot be measured most of the time. So anything, whatever you feel cannot be measured, can be measured by using this simple trick. First, write down the attribute which you want to measure. And then create a category for that measure. And then count how many units are appearing in that category. And also, if you want, you can make a proportion also. Okay. So let me, can you tell me any, uh, uh, can you, uh, I hope you are seeing my screen, right? Full screen. You're seeing my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, please let anything which you feel is difficult to measure. Can you tell? And we will find the measure. We will find the measure. Tell me anything you would like to measure. Okay, oh, so Dr. Abdul Hakim is selling uh, gender, okay? So gender, so I have categories, male and female. Okay. So I have got 30 males and 20 females in our team. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, so I can have a proportion as many of you said, as 0.6 and 0. 0.4. Or yeah, someone, someone's telling happiness or satisfaction, happiness, so happy, unhappy, you can say unhappy. So uh, let us say uh, my staff, my staff, uh, 60 people are happy 
and 40 are unhappy. So total is 100. So again, 0.6 and 1. So if I want to increase the happiness in my staff, happiness index in my staff, so I should first measure what proportions of my staff is happy and what, is, uh, what proportion is not happy. And accordingly, I will take up an improvement project. So in quality, please remember, you have to put a measure before you think of improvement. Now, if you are measuring and you have got the data, then you can do two things with the data. One is two types of analytics. What the, or two types of analysis? One is descriptive analysis. Descriptive analysis means it tells you how my performance and how am I performing. So if I am dealing with continuous data, the continuous data, I can make a histogram. Yeah. I can make a histogram, which will always look like a bell-shaped curve. Like for example, time taken to discharge a patient, time taken to discharge a patient in my, uh, say, hospital, is on an average, uh, let us say, five hours. Sometimes it's go to six hours also, sometimes seven also, sometimes eight, but very rarely it goes beyond eight hours. Sometimes four, sometimes three, and sometimes two. Very rarely it goes below two hours. So this is the discharge time the patients. Every data, which is continuous data, to make an estimate about that continuous data, how many samples I should collect? I should collect 30 samples. Just 30 samples if I collect, just 30 samples if I collect of this type of data, I will get sufficient information about the whole population. It means all the patients being discharged in my hospital, I can make a good judgment about the patient discharged in my hospital. Like I can say with good confidence, 99% of my patients, 99% of my patients are being discharged within two to eight hours. I just took an example. This values can be different, two to eight hours. I hope you understood this. Mr. Goss, he found, Mr. Goss, he found that every data has got an average. Every data has got an average. Like for example, here, what is the average? Average is five hours. And every data has got a standard deviation. It can be any value. I can easily find it. Now, I will not be telling you the formula and calculations of standard deviation at this point of time. It will take too much time. But let us let us uh, just uh, you know assume that we know about it. It's very easy. I can just put it in an Excel sheet and very quickly calculate that. Very, very easy. It's very, very easy. So from an Excel sheet, I put the data, all their patients, uh, time uh, to discharge my patients, and I find that the standard deviation is one hour. One hour. So Mr. Goss, he found that all the processes in the world, all the processes in the world, they follow this normal distribution curve, and the curve has an average, which is known as X bar, and it has got one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation, minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviation, and minus three times standard deviation. And 99% of the data, actually it is 99.7% of the data. So 99 approximately percent of the data is lying within minus three standard deviation to plus three standard deviation. So this is true for your weight also. This is true for your age of the patients who are visiting your hospital. This is true for the heights of the patients. This is true for waiting time in OPD. This is true for registration time. This is true for um, your, uh, um, your, uh, your blood samples also, time taken to dispense the medicine also, everything, almost. Everything. This is true for almost everything. So I hope you got the idea here. We are looking at Descriptive, it just describes. Okay, I hope you are with me now. This 
and these two limits are known as lower control limit and upper control limit. LCL and UCL, lower control limit and upper control limits. Okay. Now let us come to this. Okay, let us let me continue with the uh, something more in continuous data. So if I if I make my charts, if, my, if I make my charts. Lower control limit is how much? Two hours. Upper control limit is eight hours. So I will say that in my hospital, a patient will be discharged within two to eight hours. And if they are discharged within two to eight hours, this is the way our process behaves. So we will say, Although two to eight hours is very big range. And of course, no one is happy with seven or six or eight hours of discharge, of, uh, discharge time of patients. But in statistical terms, we will say that the process is under control. We will say that process is under control. So tell me, is this process under statistical control? Yes or no? Is this process under statistical control? Yes or no? Yes, it is under control. Yeah, Anjit is telling, Najaf is telling, Dr. Deepak is telling, Jana, everyone, uh, Sehsan, Sadia, oh yeah, everyone, Dominic. Yes, you are right. Now, is the customer happy? Is the patient happy? Is your hospital director happy? Your, these are your customers. Are they happy? No. So there is another uh, limit. There is another limit, which is very important. Not only the control limits, but another limit. What is the other limit? We call it as voice of customer, which says, Patient should be discharged within, let us say, three hours. Voice of customer. Patient should be discharged within three hours. We call it as the specification limit because this is upper specification limit. So I can call it as UCL also. You can call it as USL, upper specification. This is voice of customer. If this is voice of customer, this limit, and you can also say that at least minimum you should take, uh, I'm just giving like, minimum you should take uh, half an hour at least. Should not be in a hurry. So I can even put one more lower control limit. So lower, sorry, lower specification limit. And I'll say lower specification limit is 0.5 hours. So we should discharge the patient between 0.5 to 3 hours. This is the voice of customer. Now, this, if it is voice of customer, these limits are voice of customer, then what is this known as? What is this known as? This is known as voice of process. Voice of process, like your discharge process. If it had a voice, let's say, let's imagine this is your discharge process. Yeah, this is a discharge process. Okay. If it has a voice, what would you say? Voice of process. It will say, well, I will behave between two to eight hours. You may want anything. I don't care. You may want to me to behave between 0.5 to 3 hours, but I don't care. I'm, I'm a process. I also have a voice. The way you have trained your people, the way you have put your policies, procedures, your processes, the way you write your uh, discharge summary, the way you, uh, uh, the kind of mistakes you make during reports, that the pharmacy takes a long, long time to dispense the medicines. 
whatever. The way our all whole system is, right from training to the uh, process in an SOP and standard of procedure, I will continue to behave between two to eight hours. And CPHQ professional will bring this process with the new control limits, which is within the customer's limit. This is the main job or CPHQ professional will be able to do. So here you can use PDCA, you can use DMAC, you can use Lean, you can use Kaizen, you can use Six Sigma. All these tools and techniques are taught to you in brief in CPHQ. Certified professional. So, so this means that the voice of customer is to discharge the patient between 30 minutes to three hours. Yes. And today we are at two to eight hours. So we need to improve the process. Okay. This will take efforts. This will take a lot of tools and techniques. Let us learn some of the tools and techniques. We have got a lot of time. We'll be learning a lot of tools and techniques. Yeah. I'll teach you cause and effect diagram. I'll teach you Pareto chart. I'll teach you scatter plot. I will teach you FMEA. I will show you some projects also. We've got a lot of time. Up to here, you are with me, right? Now, let me tell you one more. When the process is under control, suppose, suppose, I ask one, one of the staff there involved in the discharge patient, uh, or the patient process, why this patient took three hours and why this patient took six hours? Tell me. Now, if this staff is a CPHQ professional, he or she will say, it was what she will say. Well, there are so many, Mr. Amitabh. Mr. Amitabh, there are so many, so many reasons discharge time. She will make a cause and effect diagram. She will make a she will make a cause and effect diagram. So many things responsible for this high discharge time. Like well, can you tell me some reasons? Can you tell me some reasons? Okay, reports are not correct. Yes, if errors in reports, reporting errors, okay. Okay, reporting time or discharge time, okay. Discharge, uh, uh, discharge summary time, okay. So discharge summary time, okay. Uh, what else, discharge summary time? Pharmacy uh, time, okay, pharmacy time, okay. Pharmacy time, what else? Uh, okay, they're not following any charter. Okay, not following SOP, standard of delay and discharge medication. Uh, uh, okay, next appointment not available. Okay, uh, nurse too busy. Yeah, okay, very staff. Staff is busy. Okay, uh, MRP orders for report. Okay. Uh, yeah, insurance clearance, okay, okay. So insurance clearance time, so on and so forth, you got it. Staff busy, okay. Now, the data is either continuous or attribute as we know, right? We know that data is either. Discharge time, tell me, discharge, patient discharge time is continuous or attribute. Continuous data or attributed? Continuous data. Okay. This is continuous data. I'll write C here. And reports, errors in the reports. Report is having error or no error. It is at continuous or attributed data. Yes, it is attribute data. Okay. Discharge summary time, continuous or attributed data. 
Yes, continuous it. Pharmacy time, continuous or attribute, continuous, yes. Staff busy, busy or not busy. It is attribute data. And insurance time is continuous. So I've got different combinations. Different combinations. C and A, and C and A, and C and C. And then there can be another combination of A and uh, A and A also, attribute and attribute. Okay. I think. Now all types of analysis can be done by using some tools. So, okay, the first before that, so this was a cause and effect diagram. We call it as fishbone diagram, also known as Ishikawa diagram. So again, going back to my question, I asked one of the staff, one patient is taking two hours or three, let's say three hours, another patient is taking six hours, why? So she will say, this is due to lots of causes acting on the system and producing this variation. And this all is known as common cause variation. All the causes are acting on the system and producing this variation. This is common cause variation. We call it common cause variation. Processes under control. But suppose one patient took 12 hours. One patient took 12 hours. I ask why 12 hours? Here, there will be a special cause. Okay, it took because some pharmacy time because one medicine was very, very critical. We were waiting for that medicine. And because of that, you know, it took like eight hours to get that medicine. And that is why there is a special cause. So we call it as special cause. This we call it as special cause. So this variation is known as special cause variation. And the yellow one, this is known as common cause variation. All the causes are acting on the system and producing the variation. Common cause and special cause variation. Have you understood this? Now the special cause variation needs to be dealt with by the operations people, people who are in the operations. The common cause has to be dealt with the CPHQ profession. So special cause will be taken care of by the operations people on a day-to-day -day basis. They know what is the problem. Oh, uh, one particular medicine to play. It doesn't happen every time. It's an outlier and we will ignore it. A quality professional will ignore it. And he or she would be more interested in shifting the control limits. They are more interested in common cause variation and changing the control limits. I hope you are understanding. Changing the control limits, limits is like changing the DNA of our process. For the last six months or maybe six years, I'm taking two to eight hours. This is how we have been operating for years. Now I've taken a paper improvement project to shift from here to here. This will not happen easily. I have to use some specific tools and techniques. Let us learn uh, two to three of them today more. How to do that? So, first tool will be Pareto analysis. We'll do, do Pareto. We'll do Pareto. Let me do a Pareto. So I will, what I will do, I will make a Pareto chart. What is a Pareto chart? Pareto chart, okay, let me, let me make it, let us, let me make some data. Let us uh, create some raw data and based on that, let us do it. Yeah. These are the causes. What are the causes? Discharge summary time is delayed. Discharge summary is delayed. Okay. Then staff is busy. Staff is busy. Then insurance time. So I'm just taking maybe some of them. Uh, uh, and we have got reporting errors, errors, 
Okay, then D, E, F, G. I'm not writing all the causes. Okay. Now let us see. What I will do, I will write how many times I see this happen in my in my hospital. Discharge, so I collected 100 uh, patient, uh, data of 100 patients, let us say. Yeah. 50 of them were delayed because of discharge summary was delayed. 20 of them were because of staff was busy. Or well, let's say, uh, yeah. Um, 10 of them were delayed due to insurance time. 10 were delayed due to, let's say, uh, okay, so let me put here, maybe 10 here. 10 were due to staff busy, 10 due to responsiveness, and then remaining like two here, three here, one here, one here, et cetera, et cetera. So total is 100. So if I calculate the percentage, I've deliberately, uh, deliberately taken 100, so it's easy for me to uh, calculate a percentage. Otherwise, you need to calculate the percentage. So three, two, one, 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 one. And then cumulative. Cumulative means 50 is first one is 50. First two together is 60. First three together is 70. First four together is 80. And then 83, 82, 80. Sorry, 83, 80, 80, 80, 80, 85, and 86, and 87, et cetera, et cetera, goes up to 100. So what I will do, I will create a chart, bar charts. First one is discharge summary time. Just summary time. Second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh, and so many of them. Now, Pareto analysis. Mr. Wilfredo Pareto was an Italian economist. He found that 80% of the uh, people in Italy, so 80% of the wealth in Italy was with 20% of the people. He called it as 80-20 rule. So Joseph Juran applied this equality. Jo Joseph Juran, you learn about Joseph Juran if you uh, join my CPHQ training, so you can learn about Joseph Juran also, Deming also, philosophies of Deming, Juran, Shivard. I just showed you Shivard control charts, right? This was Shivard control chart. This is known as control chart. We, what we learned was, this is control chart. This is cause and effect diagram or fishbone diagram. What we are learning is Pareto chart. So what Mr. Pareto said, or what Mr. Judan said, 80% of your problem, whatever you have listed here, 20% of the causes, we have listed maybe lots of causes, but let's say you have listed 10 causes. Only two or three are responsible for 80% of your problem. 80-20 rule. I'm doing a little slow because I saw that a lot of people have not undergone any quality related training. So I'm going doing a little slow, uh, but I hope that's fine. Those who are already undergone some quality related training, uh, they may be finding it a little slow, but you know, uh, we have to take care of the majority, right? Yes. Uh, but uh, everyone is fine. Uh, I hope speed is fine. Speed, speed is fine, right? Or should I speed up? You, you tell me. Okay, good. That's really good. So now, Pareto chart. So what I do, this I put the cumulative line, first two together. First two together, 80% uh, 
Anijit is telling, can you repeat the 80-20 rule? 80-20. 80% of your problems, 80% of your problem on discharge time, only 20% of your causes. So if you have listed 10 causes, 20% of 10 means two. So only two are responsible. Here in this case, can you tell me how many are responsible? First, first one is responsible for 50, first two are 60. So first four are responsible for 80% of my problem. So I will get a cumulative chart. How can I make a cumulative chart? Let us see. A, I'll try to, yeah. First one is 15. First two are first five, 15, 10, 60. Then second is 10th, then 70, 80, 90, and nine, uh, et cetera, et cetera, up to 100, right? So at 80%, I'm getting how many? These four are responsible for my 80% of my problem. Now I will focus on these 20%. Why they are 20%? Actually, I listed 20 causes, 20 causes. 20% of 20 is how much? 20% of 20 is how much? Four, isn't it? So four causes I will focus on. I'll forget about all other causes. But after that, we, I will further validate the data. Validate the causes. How? Let us see. So what are, let me validate. First is discharge summary time. When... I am trying to validate the data. I'm now doing root cause analysis, in-depth root cause analysis, data-oriented, data-oriented root cause analysis, data-oriented root cause analysis. How? When the data, when the data both Time, this factor, discharge time is continuous. And this one also, discharge summary time. Both are continuous. Both, both are continuous, right? This is also continuous. This is also continuous. Generally, we call this as Y and X. Just if you are interested, I'll maybe go a little deep also. So this is Y, we call it as Y. These are all X factors, X factors, X factors and Y factors. So, so this I'm plotting on Y here, Y axis and this I'm plotting. Both are continuous. I will plot and scatter plot. We call it as scatter plot. If I get a line like this, which is increasing with X and Y both are increasing, I say I have a positive relation. I have a positive relation. But suppose I get something like this. Let's say discharge time and experience of the person experience of the person who's handling the discharge process, higher the experience, less is the time. Negative correlation. Negative correlation. Okay. In either case, I will say, yes, summary time is a root cause. Experience is a root cause. But suppose I get a chart, something like... Uh, I'll very quickly here, I'll make it, make it in the same space. Summary time, this is again summary time. In another case, I'm taking discharge summary time and the discharge time. If I get graph like this, tell me, is there any relationship? Is the discharge summary time a root cause here? Does it impact my discharge time? No. It is not the root cause. Look for some other root cause. So what I'm doing based on small data, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 samples, 30, 40 samples, don't have to collect too many samples. The rule is for continuous data, for continuous data, 
just collect around 30 to 50 samples to get enough information about the process. For attribute data, collect around 200 samples, around 200, approximately 200. It also depends on some other factors. I, I can't discuss all these factors here, right, at this point of time, but this is the thumb rule, around 200 to, actually this is uh, 1,100 also, to 200 to 1,100 samples is a very, very fair, good thumb rule for attribute data. It depends on many factors. Depends on actually what is the quality of your product, like happiness. 99% of the people are happy. Then just collecting 100 samples is not enough. You have to collect at least 300, 400 samples to find that unhappy one, unhappy person, isn't it? So it depends on the quality of your uh, existing performance of your process. If your process is at 90% quality, you should collect 100, 100, 150 samples. If your process is at 50% quality, 50% 50 of your patients are dissatisfied. Then you can even collect 10 samples. You'll find those five dissatisfied patients in 10 hours. So just 10 samples will tell you that 50% of the patients are there are dissatisfied. So your sample size for attribute data depends on your quality of your process. So 50% quality, maybe 20, 30 samples is good enough, but 299% quality, then maybe 200, 300, you'll have to collect to get that one dissatisfied patient. Now, we have seen scatter plot, validation. Whatever is the situation, we validate. And one more tool, I will, I, uh, maybe I'll discuss, which is about, uh, then I will talk, I'll show you one project, two, one or two projects, how other projects have used it. I'll show you two, three projects. Then I will also talk about lean applications. Uh, so I, here I was talking a little bit of the statistical concepts. Another application also we'll talk about where uh, waste in the hospital, a lot of waste in the hospital, a lot of process wastes. So uh, we, we call it as eight wastes, types of wastes, seven, eight wastes. Okay. Maybe I, we have still have a lot of time, so I will try to uh, you know give you more information about that uh, topic. Before I move on, one more statistical tool, which is uh, known as uh, box plot. So let me talk about box plot. What happens if, let us say, see, I can't, uh, I can't apply, I can't apply scatter plot to staff busy or not busy. Can I apply? How will I do? Scatter plot staff busy or is busy staff responsible for my um, uh, is busy staff responsible for my high discharge time? How will I come to know that? How will I come to know that? Time. Staff busy. Now busy and non-busy is attribute data. I cannot use scatter plot. So let me take two scenarios. By collecting 50, 60 samples, I can make it. When the staff is busy, time taken is this. Not busy. We, we created box plot, I will not be able to tell you exactly the details of box plot at this point of time, but just to tell you, this is the median, the center is the median. Okay, okay so, so that's the only thing I can tell you. And these are the quartiles, those who, are no, and those who know what is quartile, so for them I'm just telling, this is the minimum, this is the maximum. Now, if you get the data like this, In this situation, so there are two, let's say, either you can get situation A or situation B. In, if you get a situation A, if your data suggests like situation A, you will say, yes, busy staff delays the discharge time in my hospital. But in, if you get the data analysis like this, in B, you'll say, 
Well, staff is busy or not busy, still I take two to eight hours. So staff is busy is not the root cause. Look somewhere else. Maybe the discharge summary time. Maybe the reporting errors. Maybe the uh, insurance time. Maybe the pharmacy time. Any other X factor, look, look somewhere else, but don't blame the business of it's like staff is busy as the root cause. So each and every tool, X factor with Y, X with Y, X with Y, every factor is based on the statistics, data analysis, data analysis. And this is, people say this is a difficult topic. And they, they say, I don't understand what is there. Nothing is very simple. By the way, we make it simple. <laughs> we are known for it. <laughs> for years we have been doing. And so good. You've learned types of data. You've learned average standard deviation. So there are three, actually. Uh, I just talked about average, the mean. There is a median also. Median means median disk divides the data into two equal halves. Mode is the most frequently occurring value. So I won't go into too much of basic statistics. I'm assuming this you can even study this or ask one of your colleagues. They will tell you what is mean, median, and mode. Very, very simple. Mean means average. Median means divide the data in descending order. And after that, find the central midpoint. So 50% of the data will be below the median and 50% of the data will be above the median. So 10 samples above the median, 10 samples below the median, that means that is the median. Mode means most frequently occurring value. Mode is applied to attribute data. Mode is applied to attribute. Like here, causes were the attribute, remember? Causes, discharge summary. These are the causes like A, B, C. What is the mode here? The cause which is occurring most frequently, discharge summary, time taken to take a lot of time, that is most frequently occurring, that becomes my mode. I should focus there. Mode means attribute data, most frequently occurring value. Okay. So now I think we have, we have you, you, are, you are learning really well. Uh, I, was, I was thinking that, you know, it will become too tough, but if you are, if you are fine, then I'll Okay. okay, good. Now let us move on to the, let me show you before I move on to other uh, uh, tools, let me show you some of the tools. So here, uh, maybe I'll show you some projects. Okay. So I just discussed this. Performance management, simple to operate, simple to understand. One form and metrics when you are me measuring something. Don't be afraid of data analysis. I hope some of the fear is removed. Remaining fear, if it's there, it will also be removed in the next half an hour. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, do you agree with me? I hope you are with me. Good. So, what we learned was statics, continuous and variable. If it is continuous data, I use histogram. If it is attribute data, I use Pareto chart. If it both continuous attribute box plot, both continuous, I use categories. Advanced tools for continuous continuous is regression. Advanced tool for continuous attribute is ANOVA. Well, I'm not discussing that part here, but let me show you a project. Now, this is an improvement project. We call it the MAC project. The performance improvement topic, this topic is there. You have to learn lean, you have to learn Six Sigma, you have to learn PTCA, you have to learn FMEA. So all FMEA I'll teach you, DMAC I'll teach you, right? I'm teaching you right now. Lean, I'm, I'm going to talk about also. Lean and DMAC I'll be touching upon. FMEA I'll be touching upon. So you'll learn a lot of tools. Yeah. Don't have to worry, don't have to. If you have, you're studying for CPHQ, this will make your life easier. So the total time spent by an OPT patient is uh, so very high. I'll, I'll just summarize the whole thing. It's taking 93 minutes to wait in the queue. Total queues, 
this queue, registration queue, OPD queue, pharmacy queue, billing queue, a lot of queues. Total time, 93 minutes, sending the queues. We would like to reduce 93 to 30 minutes. And when you are doing a Six Sigma project, you do define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. You use five phases. Five phases, D, M, A, I, C. So first thing which you do, Donabedian. Donabedian is a quality guru in healthcare. Use Deming's systems approach, and we call it SIPOC, supplier input process output and customer. Whenever you are trying to improve anything, the first thing is do a high level process map. What is known as high level process map? SIPOC. Another two. You are learning one more thing. High level process. S I P O T. Start with the customer, identify the customer. So always you write the supplier with the first identify patient, output is prescribed treatment, process start, register, all the process steps to be briefly. What are the inputs of the process? Write down. And problems are not in the outputs, problems are in the inputs and process. So focus on inputs and process. And we know you can measure everything. So first, measure how much time it is taking. You make a histogram. Uh, when you come to my session, I also teach you, uh, give you, we give you a software also in CPHQ training. We give you a software for free. And uh, you can analyze the data in just one place. Very, very simple. Right now I'm teaching you the theory. I can even show you these clicks. But if I just show you clicks, you will say, oh, it's too easy. So I'm telling you the theory. You know, I'm, I'm doing all my hands right now. I explain Pareto with hand. Otherwise, it's very easy. Just click just one button, put the data. Pareto is ready in just one. So you learn all these. Uh, so here is to plan is created. Then cause and effect diagram is created. Why high waiting time? Here? I'll, I'll just be a little fast here. Then I do a Pareto. Where the mostly time is happening? Registration, doctor, box plot. This department is attribute data. This is continuous data. I did a box plot. I analyzed the data. I found the reasons. And finally, if I find that yes, I, I got the root causes. I worked on the root causes. And then I was able to reduce the root time. This is a summarized data, a detailed project I'll show you in a short time. So before and after, now I have reduced my time and now I'm able to control the process. See, so define, when the define phase, what did I do? I defined the problem statement and goal statement. Define the problem statement and goal statement in the project charter. Define phase. Measure phase, what I did. In the define phase also, I write a siphon. Then measure phase, I write collect the data and display the data, descriptive statistics, histogram. Then analyze phase, I'm analyzing why I'm taking more time, making a Pareto and getting a root cause. And the improve phase, we give suggestions. We have not written that suggestion here because it's specific to the task. And finally, in control phase, you should be able to sustain that improvement for a long time. For a long, it should not happen. You improve the process for uh, for two, what, two, three months, and again you go back to the original stage. No, so that is what. Another process. Another project. Here, MRI scan for multiple exams was was taking more time. I'll not go into the detail. I'm just see the flow, use of the tools, right? Then. With they thought that we can reduce the waiting time for the MRI scan by putting more equipment, more machines, more scanning equipment, but adding that, that was not the root cause. So adding those equipment also did not uh, reduce the problem. Total scans, total exams remained the same, even with two. In fact, with two, the per machine, you know, that reduced.
Uh, some people are asking who are process leader, mentor, champion. In fact, you can attend my yellow belt, free yellow. I also conduct a free Lean Six Sigma yellow belt certification program. Like that, you can attend my certification for that. Uh, contact my team, you can always attend. Or my team can send the link. It's a recorded version. You can send, my team will send a link. You can, you can see that. Uh, I have described, in fact, in that, I have used the mini tab software. I have described the discharge cycle time. The same project which I was describing right now, I've used the mini tab software. So you can just see that uh, the first, the, the, my team can put that uh, video with my beard. In that you know it was a one it is a one year old video where I was having during the lockdown you know I have grown some beard so you can see see that video of it uh, my team has just put a, put in the link so please store that link after this training please watch this two hour video it will really help you I've explained a lot of concepts same what I have done but some little bit more concepts so now I make a histogram I do a root cause analysis. Two root causes were master schedule and insurance authorization process. Master schedule and insurance authorization process. They worked on it. Master schedule was made as per the arrival rate of the patients, not from hospital, like staff, uh, staff's uh, uh, convenience. Earlier it was keeping in mind of the staff's convenience. Now it was patient when they're arriving. So they changed that. And also in students, uh, process was, authorization process was changed. Both were changed. And sorry, both were changed. The two root causes they were found. And the master schedule was changed. I'm not going to describe that right now. And then finally it was drastically reduced. And the number of exams per week increased. So this was just, uh, maybe I'll talk about FME also, failure modes and effects analysis, one more process. Is there? Let me take a simple example of failure modes and effects analysis, FMEA. Then I'll talk about lean concepts. FMEA. What is FMEA? Failure modes and effects analysis is you imagine how your process will fail. You imagine how your process will fail. And then you take a preventive action so that it doesn't fail. Very simple. Imagine the worst possible scenarios. How? That's a structured way. So in short, see, due to lack of time, I'll not be able to uh, uh, give you a handwritten example, etc. But I'll show you one example. Maybe I have got, we have done FMEA, maybe more than 5,000 FMEAs we have done in different hospitals. So I'll show you one of them. Simple. So here, let's say, first process, what is the process? What is the input? What will fail? Like, for example, if let's say, take an example. You are taking an example of going to your hospital. There is a process. What is the failure mode? Failure mode is that uh, you are late. Yeah. What is the effect of the failure? Maybe patient is waiting or, uh, or productivity loss. Then here you will put a number, 1 to 10, severity rating. In fact, in FMEA, FME, failure modes and effects analysis is the full form. FMEA, failure modes and effects analysis. Okay. The links which my team has sent is the yellow belt training, Lean Six Sigma, where I have described to you tools in more in details. Uh, one of you is asking, uh, Jenna is asking about the uh, link. So I'm just answering the question that uh, if the link is about the uh, some more tools and techniques. And I have, there I have shown using a software which we provide to you for free during our CPHQ trainings. So you can uh, have a look at that as well. So FMEA, failure modes and effects analysis. I will put a rating one to 10. 10 means very, very severe. One means not severe at all, not nothing important. So here I will put, let's say eight. Then what are the causes of me coming late? I'll put the causes. How often these causes occur? Like traffic, one to 10 rating, eight every time it occurs. Uh, maybe alarm, uh, sorry, uh, the, 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 uh, I keep sleeping. Maybe that is another cause. How often it occurs? Oh, every day it happens. What are the current controls? You put a current, oh, I have an alarm for that. How effective is that alarm? Detection rate. So I give three ratings. What are the three ratings? Severity ratings, occurrence rating of my causes, 
and the detection rating of my controls. Good control, it will have a lower rating. Bad control, it will have a higher rating. High rating in every case, severity, very severe, bad for the hospital. Occurs every time it occurs, bad for the hospital. Very bad control, high rating, bad for the hospital. Multiply all these three ratings to get your risk priority number, RPN. And highest risk priority number, you will be prioritizing and acting on that. Let me show you one, I think, an example will help you to understand this. Let me show you that. Uh, example, this one. Yeah. This FME sheet, uh, by the way, I have done FME one uh, uh, video also. My team will send you a link. You can, you can, uh, you know, I have described FME very much in detail, and uh, you can watch that video whenever you have time. So you learn more about FME failure modes and effects analysis. My team will be putting that link into that. Okay, uh, uh, into the chat box. So process step: pediatric patient handling is my process. Pediatric patient handling is the process. Okay, I'm just trying to increase the. What is the failure mode? Patients are falling down. What is the potential failure effect? Injury. How severe it is? It, it is severe. What are the potential causes? Lack of awareness of family. How often it occurs? One to 10 ratings, seven times, many times it occurs. Another cause, lack of awareness of our staff. How many times it occurs? Not much. Our staff is aware, so it is not uh, you know, affecting too much. Wet floor, oh, yeah, sometimes it happens. The other one, sorry. Then uh, medication, medication. Okay, how many times it occurs? Sometimes it's five, or one to five, 10 rating five. What are the current controls? Like lack of awareness of family. What are the current controls? We educate the parents. Today, we educate the way we tell the parents. Okay, uh, we'll be giving some medicines and, uh, you know, uh, something might, you know, you need to take care of the ward, your children, etc. Educating the parents, does it help? Well, no. Right now, the system really doesn't work. So, if I see, let let's let's look the severity rate. Eight multiplied by seven multiplied by eight is four hundred forty-eight. Okay. Then another one: lack of awareness of staff is two. Eight multiplied by two. What are the current controls to check take care of the lack of awareness of staff? Orientation program is it effective? Yes, very effective. It is one. 8 into 2 into 1, 16. So it is not any big cost. Similarly, I get ratings for everything. And finally, I do a Pareto on those ratings. Highest one, I will attack. I will attack the highest RPN and I will give some solutions. Like we give material, we started showing the videos to the parents now. What, what will happen if the fall happens and parents have started learning from that. So this is how you will be. Very quickly, I just showed you an FME. Pay their modes and effects analysis. Very powerful tool. Not difficult. See, nothing is difficult. See, every time these are jargons. F-M-E-A. By the way, JCI, if you're an active hospital of JCI, it says it's mandatory to do FME on all the new processes. Anything you are implementing new has to be, you have to then do an FME. It's not so difficult. Yeah. By the way, come to my training programs. I will tell you a lot of tools. I'll give you many tools. These are just a simple sample. Okay. Now, let me talk about lean part. This is also important. With the light, lot of high volume, high variety, high variation, high speed in hospitals. 
leads to service breakdown, wasteful processes, medical errors. Let us talk about the wasteful processes. So lean is about war on waste, not the waste which you throw in the dustbin, but the process waste, waste of the process, like searching, waiting, transportation, walking, motion, extra capacity, supplies, inventory, man hours, extra man hours, extra production, extra files, extra paperwork. All these things are non-value added activities. Uh, it all started in Toyota, but I'll not go into the details right now. So here are the five lean principles. First, you specify the value. Look at the value what the customer is looking at. Don't look at this is the part of process. You have to challenge each and every step. You have to tell whether this is a value added step or not. If it is not, remove that, eliminate that. You can use SCAP technique. Eliminate, simplify, combine, automate, and parallel. Ask, map the process. Ask on every step five questions. Can I eliminate that? Can I simplify it? Can I automate it? Can I make it parallel? SCAP, E-S-C-A-P. My team will put a link on SCAP technique. I have, in a video, I have explained what is SCAP technique. My team will be putting a link. One more tool you can take. Later on, you can watch. There is no time to describe that tool right now. Now, how to get the waste? See, three criteria to choose the waste. Any activity which is not bringing the input closer to the output is a waste. Anything not done right the first time is a waste. Anything rework, review, redoing, anything starting with re is a waste. Inspection, checking, overchecking, two times inspection, five times inspection is Try to reduce it. It's not adding any value. We are not saying that you reduce the inspection. We are not saying that. But too many, rather than focusing on inspection, why you are inspecting? Because you are committing mistakes, committing errors. Why not reduce the errors? Focus on the inputs. Rather than trying to put 20 inspectors at the, out, uh, at the output of the process, at the uh, like last stage of the process, focus on the inputs have perfect inputs, follow the process, you will not create any mistakes and errors. Why should I do an inspection? Try to reduce the inspection. So intellect, intelligence. Nurse, uh, most of the time, they're 80% of the work time, they're catering to the patient's demand, patient's health. Oh, pillow is uh, cover is dirty. My bed sheet is dirty. All these are non-value added activities. Why? It's a waste of intelligence of the nurse. Nurse is not here to take care of the uh, bed sheet and the pillow cover. But patient keeps calling. That means it is a non-value added activity. Waste, scrap, waiting, inventory, motion, transportation. If I want to remember this, you can even uh, 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 you know remember this using a technique. I'll give you a technique. I swim to I S W I M T O O. I swim to acronym. Remember, intellect, scrap, waiting, inventory, motion, transportation, over production, over processing. Like I swim to. Or Tim Woods, T I M W O O D S. Tim Woods also will do transportation, intellect, motion. Yeah. Put T I M W O O. Or downtime, that is also. Uh, I will just uh, uh, show you uh, because I don't have much time. So I will just show you very quickly some of the important stuff here. So overpricing, overtime, overstaffing, insurance reimbursement, all these are hidden wastes. You're not even aware of. They are there. They, they, they're the bigger wastes. They take up a lot of costs. You can reduce your cost drastically if you understand the wastes. If I take an example of this process, what is the value in a blood test? What is the value? Think from the patient's perspective. What is the value? Value is I want to know the status of my health, health uh, no, status of my health. That is the value. 
But what am I doing? Walking to the outpatient department. It is non-value added activity. It's a waste. Registering in OPD, waste. It is not adding any value. Now you'll say, <laughs> how can you say that? You mean to say, Mr. Amitabh, that I should start stop registering the patients? See, I'm telling you, the patient's perspective, registration is not adding any value. So that is why it is non-value added. Otherwise, you'll keep on improving that no. Some of the hospitals, we have eliminated the registration. Some of the hospitals, or we have reduced it to minimum one minute. So think of from that perspective. Okay, uh, There's not much time to talk more about it, but just to tell you very, very quickly, walking to the laboratory. All these are ways. Only two activities are value added. Remaining are non-value added. Try to reduce them as much as possible. So what is the our... What, another example, and I, I just mentioned that 80% 80, 80 of the nurse calls from inpatients for housekeeping in nature, 25% of the calls for requests for room supplies. Just some more examples, let me um, maybe, yeah. We could double the cardiology lab capacity from 8 to 16 by redesigning the work without adding staff in a single day, capacity was doubled to accumulate 16 exams. We were able to reduce diagnosis to exam time from 2,000 minutes to 64 minutes by just observing the flow of patients from cardiologist's office to diagnostic lab. Two physicians decided to see the patients in diagnostic lab. Patients make appointments to see the uh, radiolo cardiologist there and the daily schedule for a diagnostic exam was changed so patients could get both exams the same day. Cutting down admission from 17 minutes to just five minutes. Reduced number of unnecessary questions on the fact sheet. Have you looked at it, your fact sheet? You ask so many questions, unnecessary fields you keep on filling. Ask critically, why do you need to fill? This sheet has not changed for the last six years, 10 years. Your processes have changed. A process designed 20 years ago doesn't know you have an email. You'll be surprised to know that. You're still following all the old processes. Reducing signatures or steps from 18 to 12 reduced the time drastically. So all these things, you know, are part of. Ultimately, you have to just create value, remove the waste from the hospital as much as possible. It's a typical patient flow. I don't have to tell you. You know very much about it. So what we do, we do value stream mapping. Value added, non-value added. This step is value added, this step is non-value added. This step is value added, this step. Depending on how much time we know, oh, around 50% of the steps are non-value added. 50%, 80% of the time is wasted in non-value added activities. And then, uh, okay, I'll just, uh, maybe some of the waste example, unnecessary motion, unnecessary waiting, unnecessary transportation, unnecessary errors, unnecessary stock works. All these are examples of wastes. Person who's sitting idle doesn't have job, means sitting idle or overburden, both are waste. Too much of work is also waste. Over time is a waste. The nurse will commit mistakes and errors. For to correct that, you will have more costs. All see, you have to identify the waste either way. Some example: cost of five minute MD walk, six dollars. Yeah. Walk to elevator one minute, elevator wait three minutes, elevator travel one minute, walk to lab or pharmacy one minute. Nurse cost per hour, let's say $50. Then cost of one trip is $5. Cost of five trips per day per nurse is 25. So imagine multiplied by the number of nurses, multiplied by so many trips. Thousands of dollars. Lab and pharmacy in second floor, radiation equipment in ground floor, too much of motion, unnecessary movement. Bring them to same floor. Reduce the unnecessary motion. Any interruption during the uh, whenever you are uh, being interrupted, so it's a waste, waste of patient time. Yes. So uh, anyway, I will uh, uh, discharge admission. Let's see, admission, waitings, discharge. You can easily see that patients are waiting because discharge 
is generally happening in the afternoon. Why don't you make it in the beginning, in the morning? It will help. We, we call it as line balancing, load balancing. There's a lean concept. So we do that. You know, anyway, uh, you try to reduce the okay, okay is a mistake proofing. Even by mistake, you should not commit a mistake. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, show you that one. Mm. And then I think, okay. So basically, make it a visual factory, make hidden waste visible. Yeah. Uh, because of lack of time, I'll not be able to, uh, you know, have any way uh, given you a lot of tools. But just to tell you, uh, uh, Pokai, okay. Hospital Pokai examples, fixed number of gauge. Uh, large packages during the uh, surgery, complete uh, catheter kits for insertion, uh, prepackaged medication cart with correct dosage. So these are some of the techniques. Even by mistake, you should not commit a mistake. Okay, okay, technique. So all these are tools and techniques for better quality in your hospital. I hope you found this uh, interesting. Uh, uh, now I will be open to questions. Last 15 minutes, uh, I will be... Uh, uh, so I hope uh, uh, this uh, you, uh, you found this uh, program very useful and uh, you learned something today. Say please say yes if you have learned something. Let me have a feedback. My team will be uh, telling me. Otherwise, they generally uh, ask me. <laughs> yes, quality to improve the quality. We have to evaluate ourselves as well. This is like our evaluation. So, okay. Now let me uh, summarize, of course. Okay, I think uh, I'll just give a moment. So, as I said, there are a lot of credentials with us. Uh, I have some time, so I can show you Dr. Tarif Alama talking about our quality training. So he has attended our uh, lot of trainings uh, related to quality, and not only we have uh, trained uh, him, but his whole team. So uh, we have got the quality directorate and uh, uh, whole ministry. So we have trained, and similarly we have got health ministers of four countries uh, talking about uh, this was a hospital I was talking uh, uh, you know I uh, 200 to 1100 for the discrete variables and you are home yeah, at one time I was collecting 20, 23,000 data yeah. on this uh, patient classification on a time in motion study now I know for those attribute data you only 1100 not 23,000 so, that's right it's a, yeah. it would save time efforts resources yes. and yet we would get the results and make it more make the whole process more yes. eff effective and efficient as well. What do you think was that? I approached Ravi with her data, now I'm calling her the data girl. Yeah. <laughs> extract all the data, make sense of that. So, things really uh, matter and okay, I think I'll just uh, proceed. Uh, I think uh, if you want, like to hear from him, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll rather Robinson uh, with us. Rather, rather uh, of, uh, uh, answer Edward to questions. In hospital uh, in London. And, uh, we so this is King Edward Hospital in London. So we've got many, many good credentials with us. Uh, generally, uh, CPHQ certification is really worthwhile. It enhances your career. 20 to 50% salaries high have been observed in a survey conducted by different uh, third party. It's not our survey. We're talking about generally third party surveys. Um, material I've checked on NHQ websites, etc. Again, some of the optimized process can save you minimum 100,000 per quality engineering project. An option to become an independent healthcare quality consultant also is there over a period of long time. So you will be getting a certificate from Alexa Juro if you attend a training. So training, one is CPHQ trained certificate, which you'll be taking, getting from us. And if you attend our training program, it's a three days training. And we, it is happening this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, if you're interested to join in. Uh, we also give you after three days, we extra days of extra practice session for exam questions. We give you a lot of mock exams. We also give you mini tab software. 
Now, for Minisaf software training, another link uh, my team had already sent. You can please have a look at it. So, this is a medicine dispensing time reduction project. Some of the tools which we just saw, let me uh, show you. Cypoc, we learned supply and input process output and customer. So, output is the medication, customer's patient process inputs. Then you map the process. Make a flow chart, value stream mapping, how the values create and classify those process steps into value added and non value added steps. Value added and non value added steps. Then you can make a cause and effect diagram. Then identify the X factors, the Y, y and X factors. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. We are following the same technique. Define first to find the project charter, type of problem statement, goal statement. Quickly, I'm telling you because of lack of time. Yeah, I, I told you that I'll be showing one project, but I showed you three, four projects now. So then we make a data collection plan, proper data collection plan. We have, and then after that, we display the data in a histogram. What is the average? What is the standard deviation? After that, we are. So, so uh, then uh, after that, you map the process in much more detail, make your box plots to validate the causes. Is the profiler affecting the time? Scatter plot for number of items affecting the time. Pareto chart is type of clinic, which clinic is contributing the most. So you can say cardiology, spinal and neurology clinics are contributing the most. Your links, your links. You can join uh, my LinkedIn. Uh, my LinkedIn, uh, I'm by name of Amitabh Saxena, A-M-I-T-A-B-H, Amitabh Saxena. You can uh, join, uh, you can join me uh, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, the LinkedIn request received in the next 10-15 uh, uh, minutes, I will be uh, accepting it without much. Uh, otherwise, we have to be very careful nowadays, but I'll be accepting it. Uh, 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 I'm assuming that you'll be uh, sending the links uh, for joining request. So please, uh, uh, please send the request. And also, you can also see a lot of my videos in NXS YouTube channel. So a lot of tools and techniques I've done, a lot of uh, each, like, Cause and effect, Pareto, box plot, schedule plot, regression, cypoc, a lot of tools, you know, I have made videos. And, you know. So, yeah, so as I was talking, so it's like an, a little bit of hypothesis test also. I did not talk about that. You learn in our CBH session. So finally, you get 5Y analysis. 5Y means ask why five times. When you want to get to the root cause of anything, you can ask why five times. And then so this is the one. So finally, with a lot of efforts, uh, you were able. They were able to. They they gave some suggestions. Uh, I'm I'm not not discussing that suggestion, but they gave suggestions. And finally, they they were able to reduce the uh, medicine dispensing time. Statistically significant reduction had happened. Was observed. And that is how. So I just wanted to show you this project as well as part of our training. So good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for attending the training.